Hey guys, it's Roderick. I'm here with Uncanny Avengers number three. So, I have to, you know, I really have to say, I want to thank you guys for dropping in the comments because I really love the discussions we have in the comments. And there's one reviewer who, in particular, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name. I was going to write it down. And we were like going back and forth, you know, this week about kind of what the other heroes could have done. And really, you know, I have put my foot on the Avengers and Fantastic Four's neck a lot during this fall of X because I just have felt like they've just left the mutants in the wind. But I have to say that, you know, this viewer really kind of, you know, convinced me that maybe like, you know what, what else were they supposed to do, right? People got their own problems and you know what? There's nothing you could do. And I have to say that this issue of Uncanny Avengers has changed my mind about the Avengers. So I'm not gonna say I'm gonna keep my foot off their neck, but I'm gonna let it up after this issue, right? Like, and then before I know I was like, uh, uh, on their neck, but now I'm just gonna kind of let it up a little bit, let them breathe, give them some water, cause you know what? They kind of have redeemed themselves for this issue. So let's start off. So Black Widow and Deadpool are doing some target shooting or whatever. Rogue comes in and is like, we just got a distress call from Steve, he's in trouble, whatever. So they drive, so they fly off to go see Steve and he's at the burned out old X-Men treehouse, right? Which as you recall, was the trap that Orcus set forth. They, they thought it was gonna, they were be able to kill, kill and capture Jean Grey, but Cyclops went instead, which is how his ass got caught. And then, then whoever is masquerading as Captain Krakoa got the Captain Krakoa suit during that whole skirmish, right? And Steve is like <clears throat> telling people that he's formed a new Unity Squad, this is who they are, and they're mutants there, right? And he says that everybody is innocent until presumed, you know, is, and is presumed innocent until they're presumed guilty, right? And then he says that Captain Krakoa is a Cyclops, and he thinks it's somebody else. And now we cut to Orcus, who is now pissed, because Steve Rogers is out here really, because if there's anybody who these people like, is Steve Rogers. Like, he represents America, the best of them, their hopes, their better angels, all that bullshit, right? So they're kind of pissed because Steve Rogers is killing them in the press. And then Dr. Stasis is like, oh, we'll fix it with a big trial, either Cyclops or Xavier, right? So if you go back and read and, and watch my X-Men 28 um, review, you'll hear that they're trying to set Cyclops up for a trial. And this is why. And this is that's because the public narrative is kind of shifting against Orcus. And Steve Rogers is raising all these questions about, is Orcus really telling us the truth? Are they really like out for their better good and whatever? <clears throat> then he sells everybody the American dream. And then the whole thing's over, right? So then, then Captain America goes to Rogue was like, look, I, me and Ben Eric are working together. We need to start exposing the truth. I heard that y'all have a human who actually witnessed everything that happened at the Hellfire Gala that wasn't killed. Because if you recall, all the human guests were killed at the Hellfire Gala, except for one. It's Wilson Fisk, right? Because you recall he left with Emma and them at the very end when Charles was pushing everybody through the gates and the resist things came up. And then Lourdes got everybody out because um, Typhoid Mary went with fucking magic in them, right? So Wilson Fisk is like the, is the only person who is a human who can tell you everything that happened, right? <clears throat> so... Well, that's so, so Rogue is like, look, I don't know if they're all about trusting you and helping you and do whatever. Like, I'll go down and ask them, but don't be thinking, it, you know, anything's going to happen, right? So, in that, Monet and Quicksilver go to D.C. because Monet has a hunch. So, she figures out the last time they were fighting the Von, the Von Strucker twins, she smelled a very familiar perfume, and this is one of the places that they sell it. Lo and behold, it was. Now, while they're, run, while they're on their way, Monet and Quicksilver are doing this kind of like high-key, low-key flirting. And I was like, where did this come from? But since Captain Krakoa, since Captain Krakoa done knocked down one of the Von Strucker twins, I guess um, Unaccounted Avengers is like, everybody can get some, right? So I guess Monet and, and Quicksilver is going to get some. And I've actually always liked Quicksilver. And I always thought that he got like a very bad rap with his relationship with Crystal and with Luna, wherever Luna and Crystal are. Because again, we don't know where the Inhumans are at all. Um, but the Von Strucker twins show up. They fight. And then Monet tries to find out who um, Captain Krakoa is, but they, their minds are like, 
blocked from telepathy or whatever. So then the beam falls, the Shooker twins run away, then Monet and, and Quicksilver do that whole like, they're thrown together, they kiss, but they find out, they tell each other that they both put trackers on the twins, right? So then they go after the twins. And I was like, okay, cool. I don't really dislike that couple, but I like that couple, it's fine. Now, Ben shows, so Steve Rogers shows up at Ben Urich's office like, okay, I'm here. Ben Urich's like, well, the witness agreed to show up. I think Steve Rogers tells them the witness is about to show up. And then all of a sudden, here comes Wilson Fisk out the shadows being like, that, that he would they say, oh, the X-Men have a human that they're protecting. And Wilson Fisk is like, don't get it fucked up. I'm actually protecting the X-Men because as you recall, Wilson Fisk is the new white king of the Hellfire Club, right? Tony Stark's a black king, Wilson Fisk is a white king, and Sebastian Shaw is salty as fuck king, right? So anyway, that was, you know, in kind of X-Men 3. Not a whole lot, but just enough. It was good. I don't like these, you know, when comic books do this whole deceptive um, kind of covers, whatever, because that whole, you know, Deadpool with a hole in his eye, I was like, where is that coming from? So that's why solicitations, if you go and watch them, can't always be trusted because I think the solicitations and the cover will always give you something different than what the issue is, which of course is the purpose for the for you to buy it and then to see or whatever like that. So I kind of was expect, expecting something different based upon the solicitations and the cover, but this was good. Like, like I said, Steve Rogers is a stand-up guy. I don't think he's as trifling as I probably painted the whole Avengers though. I just don't, I'm just kind of tired of the mutants constantly getting a bad rap and everybody kind of giving the, giving the Egyptians, right? Doing like, oh, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, whenever they get in trouble, right? But then you still claim they're your friends whenever some shit pops off and you fucking need them for something. Because at least, at least one of them every time be stopped by Krakoa asking Jean Grey or Emma or Charles for something. And let's not forget who got rid of the Black King when the Black King came and had all the Avengers and a Fantastic Four tied up and it was Jean Grey. So I'm tired of them using the mutants as their escape hatch whenever shit pops off and they need them, but then whenever they're in trouble, they have these moral quandaries and these philosoph philosophical differences that obviously weren't apparent when you needed the X-Men's help, right? But like I said, I'm taking my foot off their neck. I'll let them just be for a moment because I did like the speech by Steve Rogers. I thought it was a great speech. It was a beautiful panel. Like you really got the sense that Steve Rogers really drinks his whole America We Are One melting pot bullshit or whatever that he was spotting off, right? So anyway, that's Avengers issue, uh, Uncanny Avengers issue number three. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you guys later. Bye.